Prime Minister's mega colonial navy purge. PM Modi unveils statue of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj on Navy Day. Up. एपोलेट्स में भी छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज का प्रतिबिंब हम सबको नजर आएगा नेवी एपोलेट्स एंड रैंक स्ट्रक्चर टू रिफ्लेक्ट द छत्रपति इज मार्क भारतीय नौसेना अब अपने रैंक्स का नामकरण भारतीय परंपराओं के अनुरूप करने जा रही है First to go was the St George's Cross, and now colonial era ranks to be jettisoned. New Navy in Naya Bharat. That's our top focus on India First. But are these steps merely symbolic, or is there a bigger message to throw out that colonial? yoke that colonial era mindset there's another question our military strategists they read and quote sun tzu and claude smith and that's that's must you must know uh, what when it comes to sun tzu you must know what's in the adversary's mind claude smith very important to know what other military strategists have been thinking and writing but do they quote the chanakya niti ever have they studied it is there something to learn and adapt either from chanakya niti or even the chakra view when you talk of the mahabharat there are regiments in the indian army that still pride themselves calling themselves the hodgson's horse for example or the napiers british officers who actually put down india's first war on independence so is there much more that needs to be done especially when we are moving towards 100 years of india's independence i am gorav savant we debate but first is always the headlines Five people killed in Chennai. Several localities inundated. Amidst the cyclone alert, the cyclone will make landfall between Nellore and Machli Pattam in Andhra Pradesh tomorrow. After BJP sweep in three states, suspense over Kon Banega Mukhya Mantri Rajasthan BJP leaders. Meet Amit Shah in Delhi. Vasundhara Raje meets 20 MLAs in Jaipur. New Telangana Chief Minister to be picked soon. D K Shiv Kumar heads to Delhi after meeting with newly elected MLAs. He will present the Chief Ministerial choice to Malikarjun Kharge and Rahul Gandhi. Standing ovation for Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Parliament after three nil sweep by BJP in the Hindi heartland. Prime Minister sends out a message to the opposition, says, "Don't vent your frustration of loss inside the house." Asks opposition leaders to learn from their defeat. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was the founder of the Hindvi Swaraj. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the Navy Day today was in the land of Sindhu Durg. He said the Sindhu Durg fort instills a feeling of pride in every citizen of India. The Prime Minister insisted that, inspired by the ideals of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, India is moving forward, abandoning the mentality of slavery, and made a series of announcements about Nai Navy in Naya Bharat. a gigantic statue of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj unveiled at the rajkot fort by prime minister narendra modi in the sindhu durg district of maharashtra on the occasion of navy day prime minister modi paid his respects to chhatrapati shivaji maharaj the founder of hindvi swaraj and the architect of maritime culture in modern india the prime minister spoke of the rich maritime culture and heritage of the maratha empire and the construction of multiple coastal forts including sindhudurg 
मालवण तारकली का ये खूबसूरत किनारा चारों ओर फैला छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज का प्रताप राजकोट फोर्ट पर उनकी विशाल प्रतिमा का अनावरण और आपकी ये हंकार हर भारतवासी को जोश से भर रही है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो स्पोक ऑफ द मेगा कॉलोनियल पर्ज एंड द रिवाइटलाइजेशन ऑफ इंडिया रिच मैरिटाइम हिस्ट्री फर्स्ट द सेंट जॉर्जेस क्रॉस वॉज रिमूव फ्रॉम द इंडियन नेवी फ्लैग रिप्लेस्ड विथ छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज ऑक्टेगन शेप इंसिन ऑफ फ्लैग similarly the epaulets will now see the british crown be replaced by the octagon shaped ensign ye mera saubhagya hai ki nau sena ke dwaj ko mujhe pichle varsh chhatrapati shivaji maharaj ki virasat se jodne ka avsar mila tha ab epaulets mein bhi छत्रपति वीर शिवाजी महाराज का प्रतिबिंब हम सबको नजर आएगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ऑल्सो स्पोक ऑफ चेंजेस इन द कॉलोनियल एरा रैंक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द नेवी कॉलोनियल रैंक्स लाइक पेटी ऑफिसर एंड सीमैन क्लास वन एंड टू विल नॉट ओनली बी इंडियनाइज बट ऑल्सो बी मेड जेंडर न्यूट्रल considering the indian navy has taken a huge leap in appointing the first lady officer to command a warship bhartiya nausena ab apne ranks ka namkaran bhartiya paramparao ke anurup karne ja rahi hai hum sashastra balon mein apni nari shakti ki sankhya badhane par bhi zor de rahe hain मैं नौसेना को बधाई दूंगा कि आपने नेवल शिप में देश की पहली महिला कमांडिंग अफसर की तैनाती की है द मराठा एम्पायर्स फाउंडर्स सील इंस्पायर्ड द न्यू नेवल इंसिन एंड वॉज अडॉप्टेड लास्ट ईयर व्हेन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी कमीशन द फर्स्ट इंडिजिनस एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर आई विक्रांत Now the navy is also taking a big lead with more than 65000 sailors all set to take up new ranks jettisoning british era ranks like master chief petty officer leading seaman etc the navy has also been at the forefront of indigenization of defense equipment and hardware bureau report india today are these changes symbolic are these cosmetic or is this an idea whose time has come and we need to take it forward joining me on india first is vice admiral shekhar sinha former flag officer commanding in chief western naval command and an accomplished naval aviator lieutenant general arun sani former army commander and also captain dk sharma former former spokesperson of the indian navy i want to begin by asking you admiral sinha removing the st george's cross putting shivaji's ensign in epaulets and of course this effort to indianize ranks symbolic or important step are we getting rid of colonial era mentality truly well thank you uh, gorov for getting me on your program and best wishes of navy day to all your viewers and uh, listeners and people who are my co-panelists here uh, you know these are not only symbolic because the prime minister from day one has been saying that it is 75 years since our independence and we must gradually move towards you know having uh, uh, you know in, in, indigenize the navy indigenize the army and the air force uh, as you know that the uh, uh, some changes have taken place as you mentioned and uh, the the naval ensign proudly uh, displays the maratha symbol on it and i think gorav we should be very happy uh, i would guess that very similar uh, crest will appear on the epaulets you know very similar one Uh, on the officers of the officer as far as the ranks of the our uh, below officer rank is concerned 
Uh, mind you, the, the British Navy does not have master chief petty officer or didn't have when we had it. They made a fleet petty officer, fleet chief petty officer much later than what we did. So uh, to that extent, yes. But if you look at it very dispassionately, the army, JCO and NCO ranks are already indigenous. Yes. Subedar, Havaldar, you know, uh, Subedar, Major. Yes, Major word is very much there from the old time. But most of them are prefixed by very, very Indian names and therefore it's not difficult to find. If you see Coast Guard, Coast Guard, all the ranks of our uh, below officer rank, they're all very much Indian, Adhikari, Pradhan Adhikari, Mukha Adhikari and all that. And I'm sure we can find very similar sounding names. Fair now, enough. Jal Sani, Indian Armed Forces are huge on tradition to inspire future generation of warriors. But do we make a mistake of stopping just at the British era? Are our armed forces too much in awe of the British legacy to do away with that, uh, with that legacy? Jal Sani. Okay, give me a moment as I try to establish my link with uh, Jal Sani. But um, Captain Sharma, when it comes Gaurav, to... I'm ranks, sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Okay, Jal Sani, my question to you was, are Indian armed forces huge on tradition? That's how they inspire future generations. But why do they stop at the British era? Are we too much in awe? Are our armed forces too much in awe of the British Indian Army and too much in awe of that legacy to do away with it? Uh, Gaurav, good evening. Uh, delighted to be on your show. And firstly, again, as uh, the Admiral mentioned, congratulations on Navy Day. Uh, I couldn't make out some of the conversation that uh, happened before with the Admiral. But getting to your question, I think, uh, may I say that uh, from what I understood, the question that you asked, uh, looking at whether this is just optics or is this uh, really a, a requirement uh, of a future India, of an India which is resurgent, so may I just say that uh, before I come to the exact issue of what they have said today, uh, I think some of the issues that uh, Prime Minister Modi has initiated in this country, and I think starting off with re-looking re at the Rajpath as Kartavya Mark, are great changes because it is to build in a national identity of a resurgent India. I think an India which is proud of its heritage, which is proud of its civilizational strength, and which is proud of being what it was, uh, a big uh, leader, uh, a leading uh, knowledge power of the future, a spiritual power of the world. So I think towards that and any changes that are done to inspire confidence in the future youth who will get a national identity which is rooted in our civilizational strength, I think is the right thing to do. Issues yeah. like uh, the point that you talked about, I think changing of insignias, dropping certain issues uh, which were irrelevant and didn't really have any meaning in current dates makes sense. And I think towards that, whether it is the uh, changing of the badges of the rank or looking at uh, what happened to the Navy flag or dropping the George's Cross, I think that is okay. Coming on to what you mentioned about, say, the armed forces today or for any of the other issues, I think uh, one thing you have to remember, traditions institutional, uh, I would say, uh, camaraderie are all rooted in historical excellences that have happened and tales of valor and courage that the past has contributed to build a unit to what its identity is today. And I think today that is one of the reasons which was seen in Kargil very obviously. People gave their lives willingly just for the izzat of the unit. So I think, but why cannot... should that izzat of a unit? Before I come to Captain Sharma, why should no. the izzat of the unit or a regiment in the cavalry come from people like Hodgsons or Napiers? Uh, uh, you know, if I may, if I yeah, may, yeah, Hodgson put down the first freedom struggle in 1857 and killed Bahadur Shah Zafar's sons. Why would a cavalry regiment be proud of being called not four horse as much, but Hodgsons horse and have HH on their shoulders? No, so let me just put it like this, that as far as the army list is concerned, all these units are listed as first horse, fourth horse, 14 horse, and not Sindh horse, Hobson's or Puna horse. Uh, what happens is like today, if you see the changes that have happened in Delhi on the roads, some of the old names of cities are still used colloquially because there's a generation which was used to using that. So today, if you look at four horse or Hobson's or 17 horse, 
I would just put it that as far as the army list is concerned and where it is mentioned in official documents, none of these names which you have mentioned are carried and put in the official lexion as far as the Indian army is concerned. Yes, colloquially this is used. Uh, and, and may I just draw a quick analogy to what happened in Russia? I was three years in Moscow, as you're aware. Of course. And I think the first thing that really came out to my eyes was that we found all this place next to Park Kulturi, this very famous exhibition ground, a full garden at the back, which had all these broken statues. So I asked them and they were being sort of uh, given the place of honor or being sort of put in whichever manner that they were in a semi broken state. And I, when I asked people, why was it? He says, I think there was a great euphoria when we broke away and became Russia from Soviet Union. And we sort of wanted to do away with all these insignias. But then in the end, we realized that it was also part of our history. You cannot wish away your history. So in the same analogy, today when these terminologies are used, Hudson's or uh, Skinner's or Sindhos, uh, they are stories which are linked to the stories of valor where Indian blood also was spilt on the ground. They also won awards during that period. But officially, as I said, okay. it's four horse and one horse and it is not Skinner's or it's not uh, uh, Hudson's. Because this uh, is something that pains. This this actually does. I, and I wonder yeah. if it's going to be picked up officially to get rid of names like Hudson's uh, from, from the Indian Army, uh, even colloquially in times to come. But Captain Sharma, when it comes to ranks, petty officer or seaman class two, there was a study, I believe, which was done internally, sir. What emerged from the from this study and why are these changes being brought about, Captain Sharma? Good evening, Gaurav. First of all, let me wish each and every Indian a very happy Navy Day. And to you, May sir. our Navy grow and continue growing every single day and make our chest swell with pride and honor every day. Now, coming back to the ranks and all, Gaurav, Things have changed. We are heading towards a gender neutral Navy. Our ranks, if you see it, it's seaman. Seaman class one, seaman class two, leading seaman, petty officer. And by the way, this petty word, we had a lot of you know the discussions on it and it's time now. And uh, you see, we must see the history of Indian Navy. We are from the Royal Navy. Then we split into two, the Park Navy, the Indian Navy, and now see where our stature is. We are amongst the first five navies of the world. We are much, much ahead of what the Royal Navy is today. We are operating nuclear submarines. We are a carrier uh, operating Navy and a very potent force at that. So now when our stature has gone up, our standing amongst the world navies is so much, our understanding, our professional acumen is way beyond what okay. people, you know, from where we started. So I don't see anything wrong in, you know, now getting back to our own and, you know, giving a new nomenclature to our ranks, which will be, of course, gender neutral, well studied and will have a maritime character to it. Fair enough. So, Admiral uh, Sinha, at Sindhu Durg, Prime Minister paid rich tributes to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. For a modern Navy, what's the importance of one, Chhatrapati Shivaji and of course Admiral Kanhoji Angre? Well, uh, Gaurav, the most important thing is to remind people that the naval forces have existed, you know, not only from 16th, 17th century when Shivaji was around, but it is, goes back to days of... Uh, uh, Chanakya and Chandraput Maurya, even they had a navy, there is a mention in the Arthashastra, if you see, and they called the, you know, the naval ship by some name. So I think that we have to go back to our historical roots to say that we are not the first ones. We were a strong navy and Shivaji gave a very hard time to Dutch, to the Portuguese and the British. You know that the the INS Angre, yes. uh, the old building where the command, the flag of the commanding in chief's office is, it has been hit by the Shivaji and is later on by Kanoji Angre by very long distance fire. It's been bombed so many times, and that building has withstood. You can still see, go and see the the bullet marks, you know, the big shell marks. You got a tree there which is you know more than three hundred fifty years old. So what I'm saying is that it reminds us, the bullets remind us that we were a strong Navy, but we have not gone back to the roots and realized that potential that, yes, we can do without these ranks. Very interesting point that you raise, 
and 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 let me take this to General Sani. General Sani, you know, if we were to do away with names like Hodgsons or Napiers, is this in a very subtle way no longer being subservient to that British culture? Because our military scholars, we study Sun Tzu and we must understand the enemy's mind or even Klotzwitz. But do our scholar warriors study, as the Admiral also put it, the Chanakya Niti? Do we have Indian military strategy, sir? Traditional Indian military strategy? No, I think, Gaurav, uh, let's put it that I think today, as much as we study about Sun Tzu and Little Heart, uh, I think Atshastra and the teachings of Chanakya, which which was much more than just a military treatise, it talked about statecraft and governance and issues related to that and where the army or the military was an instrument of power and he utilized that correctly. And we use all that colloquial terminology which come out of it very soundly in our training and including in our lexion when we're talking and discussing amongst ourselves as professionals. So I don't think it's not, uh, it may not have been given that much kind of recognition as Sun Tzu's and Little Heart's name has been given. But undoubtedly, I think Akshastra and uh, Chanakya Niti is very much on the cards. Today, uh, the whole story of deception, surprise, strategic surprise, tactical surprise is linked into issues to use the cat and mouse game of a, a reward and punishment. They're all linked to that. That is the first issue. So I think uh, I would say, Yes, it may not have been used so often and no, okay. not so visibly, but yes, it is understood and utilized in our understanding when we are talking about it within our professional sphere. That is the first issue. Second issue, I think doing away with names is not a problem at all. Today, as I told you, official lists of the military yes. do not in any way reflect any of these. But yes, colloquially, it's a generational shift. As generations move on, uh, Connaught Place has lost uh, recognition as Connaught Place, where it's become Rajiv Gandhi Chowk. I mean, as you've seen, it's a transition I've seen in the last 30, 40 years itself. Okay. So I think in the same manner, you would find that these things might lose out because there are newer histories being written. There are post-independence, starting off with what happened at Zojela with the armored units today, with armor and mech units yeah. deployed today at Kalash range. There are stories which will add to the valor and the history of those that it will dim these old Lexian names which we were used to when we got Very some... important point, sir, and I will have to let that be the last word on this part of the show because this is a debate that we will continue to take forward so that we learn more about our history, our culture, our traditions and take it forward to our future generations. For joining me here on India First, many thanks and wish you all a very happy Indian Navy Day. The day Indian Navy bombed Karachi and Karachi burned for the next 11 days.